Welcome. I've done some previous videos on this mid-2012 MacBook Pro, so I did a video on upgrading the SSD and one on replacing the hard drive cable, and I'll put a link in the description to those videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about upgrading the RAM on this computer. So I've already upgraded the RAM, but I can still demonstrate the process. So to figure out how much RAM you have in your system, you want to go to the Apple menu in the upper left and then go to About This Mac. And here you'll see it says it has 16 gigabytes of RAM under memory here. So that doesn't tell you a whole lot. So you can go to System Report. And then on the left side here, go to Memory. And this will show what kind of RAM you have in each bank. So we have Bank 0 here has 8 gigabytes, and Bank 1 has 8 gigabytes. So it's typically recommended that you put matching pair in for RAM so you can take advantage of dual channel memory. So if you were to ask Apple how much RAM this computer supports, they would say 8 gigabytes, but you can actually put two 8 gigabyte sticks in it. I've been running it that way for probably eight years. So I'll close this down. So before you open your computer, it's a good idea to make sure you have a good backup. You never know when someone might be walking by and they'll spill a cup of water on your computer. You should have a good backup anyway, but especially when you're going to open up the computer. Okay, so I'll shut this down. I'll go to the Apple menu and choose shut down. And I'm going to be using this tool kit. This is an AppSong 210 in one kit. And this was provided to me by AppSong, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not viewing this before I post it. And I'll put a link in the description to this AppSong toolkit. And I'll also put a link in the description to the memory I'm using on this computer. And if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'll close the computer here. You want to unplug the power and I'll flip it over. So in the toolkit, I'm using this double aught or zero zero Phillips screwdriver bit. And I want to remove the screws from the perimeter. So what I like to do is you work on a clean surface, I like to take the screw out and place it right next to where I took it out. So a tip for taking out these screws, you wanna make sure your screwdriver tip is straight into the screw. If you have it at an angle, you could egg out the screw and ruin it, you could strip it. So I'll take the screw out here, they're tiny. I'll set that right next to it, and then I'll repeat that for all the screws. So now all the screws are out, I'll pull the back off, and it's easiest to grip it right here on this black part by the hinge. Pull that off, and here we are. Next I'll go into my tool kit, and I'll get a plastic spudger, and I'll pop off the battery. like so. So now the battery's disconnected. So the RAM is right here. So if you have a grounding strap, you can put it on and clip it to the metal case. And if you don't, you at least want to touch the metal case to ground yourself. And you have to be very careful if you're in a place where you have a lot of static electricity. So if you walk across the carpet and touch something and get shocked, it's not a good place to be working on your computer. And the best thing would be to get an anti-static mat and everything else. So I'm going to touch the case. And then we have these two little clips here. I'm going to pull these out on either side of the memory and that will clip up and I can pull that out. I'll do it again, and the bottom one will come out. There we go. So now we have both RAM modules out. And these are the modules I'm using, and again, I'll put a link in the description of these. So to install this, I'll place one in the bottom slot. I'll press it in. And I like to wiggle it up and down just a little bit, like so, make sure it's all the way seated. And then I'll press down at the corners until it clips in. I have the second module, I'll do the same thing. Stick it in, wiggle it just a little bit, and I'll press down. So now that we have the memory in, we can reconnect the battery, and you wanna make sure it's lined up properly. Press it down, there we go. So now that we have the memory installed, what I would recommend doing is putting the back on your computer. I would flip it over carefully, leave the screws there, don't disturb them. And then I would open it up, press the power button, turn it on, and check the memory and make sure you're recognizing most modules. So it could take a little while longer to boot up when you add more memory to it. This is because the system does a memory check and if you had four gigabytes and you go to 16, it's going to take four times longer to check that memory. 
But if it doesn't boot at all, it could be a problem with the memory module. So what I would do is I'd probably take one of the modules out and try booting with one. And if that doesn't work, swap them so you put the other module in. And if it doesn't boot from either one, then you probably have some other problem that's not making it boot. Maybe you have the wrong RAM or something. But the thing is you want to isolate the different components so you can find out what's actually broken. So I'm not going to test this because I know it was working, but you get the point, you flip it over and test it. So I'll be putting the screws back now. So this screwdriver has a magnetic tip, so I'll put the screw in it. I'll stick it in the hole. You want to make sure it's straight. And then what I like to do is I'll spin it backwards till I hear a click. Okay, and then I'll go the other way. That makes sure that the threads are lined up. And I won't tighten that all the way. I don't want it to get bound anywhere else. So now I'll put all the screws in. Okay, so I have all the screws in. I'll go around and tighten them down. These do actually have a thread locker on them typically, but I'm not going to add any. Especially since this is my computer, if I ever feel one getting loose, I'll just tighten it back up again. Okay, there we go. Can plug the power back in and I'll make sure it boots up. Okay, so I'll check my Apple menu here. And I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I think this can make a big improvement in your computer performance on these old Macs. This is eight years old and it still works pretty good. I put 16 gigabytes in, but you don't have to go to 16. If you have four, going to eight would make probably a big difference. So there are a number of reasons why you might want more RAM. One would be that you run a lot of applications in parallel. So if you're running Photoshop and Illustrator and you switch back and forth between the two, it's advantageous to have more RAM. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.